But see, tonight I want to share something with you just really quickly tonight. And uh, I don't know if you've got your Bibles here. I kind of hope you do. You know, I believe worshippers should be so evident, should be a stamp on your life that you're a worshipper. Something that people, they can't put their finger on it, but they're just going to understand that you're a worshipper. But you know, I was uh, on the plane, and I, I just began to read this psalm, actually, Psalm 63. As I read it, you know, it was funny because, has anyone here ever read the titles of chapters and stuff in the Bible? I mean, you know, I, I just... I don't know, I guess I never used to. I just used to kind of go, that's more reading. I've got to get through the word qu- as quick as I can. I've got to, you know, while I'm eating my cornflakes in the morning, I'm gonna, okay, I'm done, I'm out of here. And one day I was reading this particular scripture and God brought it to mind again when I was on the plane today. He said, I want you to read Psalm 63. And the incredible thing about Psalm 63, at least in my Bible, is it doesn't start with verse 1. It starts with verse 2. There's no verse 1 in mine. But there's a little footnote down the bottom that says, that verse 1 is actually the title. And I wonder how many times I'd actually read this passage of Scripture before, before I even realized how significant the title is. But Psalm 63, the title is this. A Psalm of David when he was in the desert of Judah. Does anyone here understand or know what, what Judah represents in the Bible? Just shout it out if you know. Uh, sorry, I didn't say whisper. I said shout it out. Anyone know what Judah represents? Praise. And as I read this, the Holy Spirit said, you know, there are times in life where you find yourself in the desert of Judah, where your praise is like a desert, where your praise is like a dry place. And as I began to read this scripture, I went, God, that right there gives the context to the text. Gives the understanding of what it is that David's about to cry out. See, because in Psalm 63, it says this. You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you. In a dry and parched land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live. And in your name, I will lift up my hands. I will be fully satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. On my bed, I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. Because you are my help, I sing in the shadows of your wings. I cling to you. Your right hand upholds me. You know, we, we find David writing this psalm in a place where it's obvious that his praise is dry. It's obvious that there's something that's a little bit dry in his life. And if you actually research this scripture, you'll find it's, it refers back to, I can't remember where it is, it's either first or second Kings, where David is on the run for his life. He's got this band of crazy men who are following him, these disgruntled warriors. But you find David literally running for his life. He's in a cave. And here's the crazy thing, you know, he's hiding from a guy who once was his mentor, his leader, his inspiration. But now this guy, King Saul, is out to kill David. You see, David finds himself in a place where he doesn't understand what's going on. He doesn't understand why everything's been turned on its head. Why he'd find himself on the run from someone who really should love him. Yet we find David not saying, God, why is this happening? He says, God, I don't understand what's going on. Everything seems a little dry. Everything seems a little confused. Everything seems like it's really flipped upside down. But here's what I'm going to do, God. In the midst of my confusion, in the midst of the, 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 the thing that's going on, the scenario that I don't understand, the circumstance that seems out of hand, I'm going to cry out to you, God. In this dry place, I'm going to begin to reach out to you. I'm going to begin to lift my voice. And earnestly, I'm going to cry out to you. See, friends, I said before, I used to think that praise and worship was a nice, cool thing. But what I've discovered is that if you want to see God move, 
it takes a little bit of desperation. It takes a little bit of earnest seeking. But you know, that, do, that doesn't come in the fun times. That's not going to come in the times where we understand everything that's going on. You know when it comes, friends? It comes when you go to work. And you walk in and the boss says, look, I need to see you in my office. And sits you down and begins to have a conversation about the economy. And the fact that the you know, business projection model that they had for their company has gone totally, you know, gone totally to poo because of what's happening globally in the financial market. And, and unfortunately, because of that, your boss is going to have to let you go. And everything within you wants to rise up and go, well, don't you know my rights? And I got this right, and I got a family, and I got a mortgage, and I got... But see, friends, it's in that moment that you begin to say, God, you know what? I don't understand what's going on, but I'm going to trust you. And you begin to say to your boss, hey, boss, you know what? I, 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 this must be the hardest thing on the planet for you to have to do right now. So here's what I'm going to do. I, I don't want you to feel bad about me because, you know what? You might pay me a wage, but really, my help does not come from you. My wage does not come from you. My resource doesn't come from you. It comes from my God in heaven. And even though I don't understand, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to begin to pray for your business because I want to come back in three months or six months or 12 months and see a miracle in this workplace. See, friends, that's when you begin to worship in the midst of a realm that you don't understand. When you go to the doctors, the doctor sits you down and says, look, I'm really sorry to tell you this, but we've diagnosed you with, with cancer or whatever else. And you begin to look at that diagnosis and say, you know what? That might be what the natural prognosis is. But as I begin to worship, my worship will take me to a level, a realm that is higher than the natural. So there might be a prognosis in the natural, but my worship is going to take me to a place that is ab above the above the natural, into the supernatural. And begin to cry out and say, God, I don't understand what you're doing right now, but obviously you want to strengthen my faith. You want to grow me. You're going to take me on this journey and bring me out the other side, friends. See, God wants to do something significant in your life.